We'd like to welcome everybody to episode 23 of An Eternity of Basketball. It's 9 a.m. in the morning in Manila, 6 p.m. over there in California. Our guest for today played in the PBA for, for four different teams back in the 80s. We're talking about Utex, Tandoy, Manila Beer, and Hills Brothers. If you remember back then, he was the biggest man on the court. He was buffing his way through. That crowd in the paint, scoring all those points, career high, 74 points in the PBA. A well-loved import from way back then. I'm sure you all remember him. We'd like to welcome here on AEOB, on behalf of, of course, Noel and Sid and Charlie Kuna. We have with us Francois Wise, all the way from California. Thank you for joining us, Francois. It's been a long time. People are excited to know what's going on with you nowadays. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Glad to be here. You know, people remember you from way back then. Of course, you it was the look was different oh. then with the wristband oh, yeah. and all the hulking muscles and all <laughs> of that. Uh, but uh, you know, we we we'd like to know go back from the start from where from where it all started. I know you're you're a Bay Area guy back back then. You were on the other side of California. Oh uh, yeah. Can, can you tell us how it all started? I know you're a basketball player. You come from a basketball playing family, but how did it all get started for Francois Weiss in this this professional well, started, uh... basketball player? I am from the Bay Area, from San Francisco. Started in San Francisco. I just ended up following in my brother's footstep. My older brother, Willie Wise, had played in the NBA and ABA for nine right. seasons between the two. And then from there, we just, just loved the game and kept on playing besides myself, my younger brother. And uh, from there, off to college at Long Beach State. And from there, I got drafted, ended up getting cut, ended up in the Philippines playing. <laughs> When you played, uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of uh, basketball guys, of course, in, in, in that area where you grew up. Uh, you, you're from Lakeview, that's right? Yes. Yeah, you, you played at Balboa High, so, you know, there, there's rich basketball tradition over there as well. But, you know, how did you get into it? So you followed the footsteps of Willie, of course, who was a, a great basketball player. But, you know, how did you find it to be a game that that was for you? Is, is it just because, you know, you saw your elder brother doing it? Or it's something you just really loved when you picked up that ball and realized you could do great things yeah. with it? I just loved it. You know, me and my friends would play in the schoolyard and uh, played all sports in the baseball, basketball, football. And then I just kept playing basketball because it was year round. Pretty much everything was year round in San Francisco, but I just enjoyed playing it. And my brother was playing it. So that's what I try to gravitate it to was playing basketball. And I guess I became decent at it. So I just stuck with it. <laughs> Noel? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, my question to you, Francois, is: uh, you did you were when you were a kid, did you become this big? When did you become the big, magnificent Hulk, as as you were called? It, it probably became after my uh, sophomore, my freshman year in uh, high school. I end up the last day of school. I believe it was June fourteenth or something like that. I end up hurting my knee and just sat out the whole season, was on crutches for 10 months and didn't play my sophomore year in, uh, no, because my junior year in, in high school, because we started school in the ninth grade then. And so I just sat out, just sitting around on crutches, just eating, 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 <laughs> ended up growing a little bit. And then after, after I got off the crutches, I just started lifting weights to rehab. And I just ended up enjoying it, went to college and same thing when I went to college, just started in the weight room, always in the weight room after practice, before practice, and just kind of continued on up until now. I didn't stop all that, but <laughs> that's how I got started. That's how I ended up getting the size <laughs> to go along with the height I had. When you were at the at the Balboa, obviously, you know, you were playing competitive basketball. Maybe the scouts mm -hmm. were, were watching you already. How did you mm -hmm. end up choosing Long Beach State? Well, my first visit, I went to uh, was Marquette and you know they offered me a scholarship but at that time you can take six visits so I wanted to use up all my visits and Long Beach was kind of my last visit and all the other schools that I went to kind of gave the scholarship away because I was taking all the you know all my visits and so I ended up playing in a couple of all-star games with Michael Wiley and Donnie Martin so they had already signed with Long Beach so it made it kind of easy I just ended up Going to Long Beach, I had a couple of friends that went there. I liked the program, and I liked Long Beach and ended up signing with them. How was your stay at Long Beach, uh, Francois? 
it was it was it was real nice coming from San Francisco. The cold weather to Long Beach, the warm weather, the beach, and all that. I enjoyed it. Matter of fact, I ended up just getting married and staying down there for a while before I moved out to Riverside, where I'm at now. Yeah, one of our former uh, PBA players who also won the MVP, Ricardo Brown, uh, he messaged me and he said that uh, you two played against each other. He was with Pepperdine uh, back then. So, yeah, and you were also, he said, a part, part of a college All-American game in Indianapolis on a Final Four right. weekend. Yeah, right. Uh, do, you, do you remember that game? Yeah, we was there. Uh, it's a selection for seniors and they pick uh what they feel is the best at the time, well, you got to be get nominated by your coaches and stuff. And I end up, you know, getting picked up along with Ricardo. And we was out in Indianapolis for the final four. And on that Saturday, in between the games, we played uh, uh, that all-star game, East versus West. So I was playing where Ricardo had opportunity to, you know, play with, play with him there. And then a couple of, you know, during the summers playing against a great player. Probably still is to this day. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a principal right now somewhere in California. Oh, okay. So, great shooter. I mean, you can't, huh? I couldn't leave That's him right. open. That's you right. know, and great competitor. Brad, well, when you were yeah. when you were done with yeah. uh, with, you were done with college, you know, you ended up as the uh, as the school's leading rebounder. But then you had to take on your NBA journey. Now, um, tell us about the steps that it took before you actually got drafted uh, by the Washington Bullets. Well, what happened is just, uh, you know, I was just working out and not like now you go to these mini camps and, you know, you get invited to these invitations. They wasn't doing that back then. It was just everything that came to the game. They showed up, you know, they may show up at your school and come talk to you or watch you while you're working out. But, you know, they had seen enough and they just drafted me. I didn't even know I got drafted. They called the school because it wasn't televised like it is now. Mm -hmm. they called the school and uh, let Tex Winters know, hey, we drafted. We drafted, we need to get a hold of them. And uh, that's how that went. You know, got drafted, made arrangements, went back and played in their summer league. And you, you almost made, made the team. Yeah. Actually, you almost made the team. You were like, uh, up like what, two weeks before the season started, before you finally got the word that you were cut? Yeah, it was close. It, it, what happened ended up Adrian Dantley, he had back surgery that year, and they wasn't expecting him back. And he came back and kind of left me odd man out. So... You know, I ended up getting cut. And not too long after that, Glenn McDonald asked me, did I want to come play in the Philippines? I was kind of fit up under that 6'5 requirement. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got there from Glenn that was a Long Beach State, you know, graduate, played at Long Beach. And that's how I got over playing in the Philippines. I was, I was, reading, uh, about, I was reading about you. And then I, I saw that uh, in 1980, you played in some sort of like, a, like an all-star uh, game also. And some names that, of the other players that were there were guys like, Kenny Tyler and Larry Pounds and Freeman Williams, who actually played in the PBA a few years later. Do you recall playing against Michael Cooper, uh, Reggie? Yeah, Pierce? that was uh -huh. that was uh, the summer league, Crenshaw okay. summer league that they run every year. All the pros come back, former players. It's a big lead. I think they still do it to this day, but it was big. And uh, yeah, I played against them every summer. You know, from the time I got out of high uh, college, you know, they was there. All of them, big lead. People come from all over. Pros come back like Cooper, several yeah. other lot of Lakers that were playing in the summer league. So it's a big league. Yeah, so you didn't get to play in the NBA, but you got to play against some of these guys. I mean, how did it feel? You know, these are guys who were actually there in the NBA playing against them. Are, do they really play at such a different level? Or, you know, is, is the level really yeah, much it's, higher? It's a different level. Uh, but, you know, if I was able to hold my own there, uh, you know, it was just, it was fun. It was, it's different. It's, it's more competitive. Uh, you know, you're out to win, even though it's doing the summer league, you got your reputation out there. That's how you get it in the summer, playing in these summer leagues. Matter of fact, they call that league the Drew League now. Mm, okay, but, that's, yeah. all right, that's, all right. that's okay. where they end up going to the Drew League, yeah. So, okay, yeah, now we all know, you know what You have people is. coming back from overseas, everybody come to play. And you have a lot of scouts that come down there to watch. Mm-hmm. So when, when, when Glenn McDonald called you up, Glenn McDonald's also a Long Beach guy, right? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. How'd you, did you know him? So you knew him already from years before? Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So he was the coach. What did he tell you? You had you had Did you know anything about the PBA? Were you familiar with the Philippines at all? I didn't, I didn't know anything. He had just said he had just come back. I believe they had just won the championship or 
the year before. Mm -hmm. And he says now he's taking over as a head coach. And, you know, he says it's a great place to play. You know, the fans are great. He did say it's hot. He's, you know, he said it's different, but you're playing ball. So, you know, I was excited. He said they have the rules, you know, one over 6'5", one under 6'5", you know, these different rules explaining it. And he asked me, did I want to come? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember yeah. when we had Norman Black on the show, he had to look into the encyclopedia and what the Philippines was. He didn't know what the Philippines was, so he had to look it up in the encyclopedia. Uh, when you found out that you were going to play in the Philippines, did you, uh, what did you expect? Did you do some research as well, what the Philippines no, is all about? I didn't do any research. I was just <laughs> ready to go. Uh, the wife was pregnant, and so I just went over and didn't know much of anything didn't know anything about it to tell you the truth and when i got there it was like wow <laughs> i had been to mexico <laughs> passing through the tijuana something similar but i was like wow this is uh it's different and i think everybody need the experience going overseas because you know here in here in the states is is everything's here for us and you can get services and all that but when i went there i was like wow it was different <laughs> But what I enjoyed your, Yeah, what was your first impression when you landed in the Philippines, besides the fact that it's twice as hot as where you are? And, you know, we, got, we went to the car, people just seemed like the rules is out the door. And they just said, no, you know, <laughs> from the intersection, it's just, hey, whoever get there first, and you just <laughs> mingle your way through the intersection. It's still and, that you know, way yeah. until now. It's still, yeah. this way. It's still that way. <laughs> and, and you on the main street and people just cross the street. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, and nobody probably, you know, every now and then probably somebody get hit, but not not what you expect. People just in the middle of the street speeding and they just walk across the street. So and I was like, wow, but it was it was different. It was different. Was, but, you know, after a couple after yeah. a month or so you get used to it. Was what the Philippines your first yeah. overseas trip? First one. First one, and you know wow. I enjoyed it because wow. I, you know, after I came after the season was over and I came back, and uh, I believe it was uh, uh, ten. I think it might have been uh, uh, Team Norman Black played on uh, uh, Great Taste. Great they asked me to, They asked me to stay to play in the reinforce, but the coach. Nah, nah, we can't. <laughs> they wouldn't release me to play. So mm -hmm. I ended right. up, I, I, I left, and then I went down to Mexico to play, expecting it to be like the Philippines. I was in Mexico one day and left. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why, what happened there? One day. <laughs> one day and left. I was like, no, 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 I was just expecting it to be like the Philippines. And I was in a hotel room. The room didn't lock. A uh, door didn't lock, uh, and they said the team they had a ground out at the place they was playing. They wouldn't be back for a couple of days. I just up and told them I'm gone, paid my way, and went back. I no, uh, mm -mm. I said I just wait for the Philippines to come back around or somewhere else. <laughs> do you uh, do you remember your first game uh, in the PBA? Uh, who, who you played against, and uh, what what what, what did you day. feel when you yeah? Or what did you feel when you finally got on the court and you tasted the the type of competition that the PBA the had to offer? The physicality of yeah. the PBA. Oh, it was physical because you, as you know, they they'll let you beat up on you a little bit, but I, that mm -hmm. didn't bother me. Uh, I was just amazed because for one, it was hot and it was packed all the way around, mm -hmm. and man, it was it was exciting the first day, but. You know, I really enjoyed it on that opening day, but we had a scrimmage against another team and it was packed for the scrimmage where we was practicing at. So <laughs> had a little taste, but not like what it was going to be. And Glenn kind of informed us, hey, don't expect any calls too much. Mm -hmm. You're American, you're not going to get all of them <laughs> and just play through it. So, and you know, the players, uh, you know, was great with me trying to understand. You had most of them spoke a little bit of English or mm -hmm. did speak English and helped out and just ran everything, ran everything through you. So you pretty much have to do a lot. You gotta be in shape when you come there because they expect a lot from you. And I saw that firsthand, if you wasn't good enough or you wasn't putting up enough points, you wasn't gonna be there long. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it was for the imports back then. You had to do everything and play 48 everything. minutes too. Exactly. 
No, but you had some quality teammates. You know, that was the time of Toyota and Crispa. I'm sure you remember. Right. But Utex was right there, right behind. Oh them. yeah. They were third place. Sometimes yeah. they make the finals. So you had you had a lot of uh, of great uh, teammates. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. that, that time you, you, you had Paul sure Giordano, and so right, right. <laughs> yeah. And that's all you needed because you know Bosch could score, and then we had Fritz, Lemon Bang, uh, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jimmy Gaston, exactly. And, Jimmy and Noblezada, so yeah. We had a great Jimmy team. Yeah. We had a great team. I think we could have, well, we came, we came close to making it. I, I think I ended up pulling my muscle when we was playing against San Miguel and ended up losing that game. But, you know, we had a good team. We finished third, I think. Yeah, we did finish third, but it was a good team. Yeah, and Boggs yeah. won the MVP that year too. But my yep. question to you right now is uh, – who welcomed you to the PBA? I mean, who gave you your first hit in the PBA? Because you see, this is a this is a big guy. We we need to send oh, a message. <laughs> the worst hit I probably got was from uh, uh, he played with a uh, Toyota. Was no, it Jaworski? No, no, no. <laughs> Not well. Jaworski gave you quite a few shots. That was just nonstop with him. But <laughs> it, it was it was the big man at uh, Duke. It? Was it Duke? It? Who did he play? Uh, Duke. Uh, Ed Duke. Okay. Ed Duke. Ed Duke. Really? That that time he was with Gilby's, I think. Yeah, I think he was with Gilby's. Him. They were sending him in, and boy, he put the punishment on you. You know, I knew I couldn't. Oh, really? I, you couldn't retaliate because you didn't have to win, but. <laughs> you, well, the fact that you remember, it probably was him. Because right? mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't play much, but when he would come in, he'd probably guard the imports. That's, that's yeah. what they would let him do. And, and Sonny's was what he would uh, get you on the forearm when he was reaching yeah. for that ball, trying to, uh, he was, man, after, karate, he karate those after a while, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that was his trademark move. <laughs> yeah, actually, move, yeah, I actually remember Francois watching live at the Araneta Coliseum when you were up against Toyota, and you actually confronted him already somewhere towards the second half of your of that game. Uh, I mean, was it when you had enough of his hitting your arm or something like that? You actually, we thought you were going to go into blows. Yep, yep, because I, you knew he was doing it intensely. I get it, but. You know, I wasn't, I never hit anybody on the court. That wasn't my nature. But sometimes you got to stand up to let them know, okay, well, maybe I'll back off a little bit. But yeah. not him. He kept it on. But, you know, after the game, he congratulated you. But, I mean, yeah. that's all you can ask for. You know what he had to do to win. So, you know, but, yeah, you know, his chops was something else. He was known for him. <laughs> then you started getting the groove of the PBA um, after that. You know, you did go on to score 74 points in one game. What was it about the PBA that you felt that, hey, I can excel in this league? Uh, what, what was it that, about the, the brand of play there, or brand of play of Francois Wise, that, that made you become one of the most endeared imports at the time? Well, you know, it was Coach McDonald. Glenn just let me play. He just said, go ahead and play. You know, shoot the shot, just play. And I enjoyed playing because a lot of times the ref did let you, did let you play. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times in the post, I did get a lot of people off me. They let it go <laughs> sometimes. But, yeah, I just enjoyed playing because they didn't complain. They just dealt it back. And I didn't mind. You know, I grew up playing physical the whole my whole life, playing with my older brother. So, you know, when you out there playing in the schoolyard and I was playing with the older kids, you didn't call foul. You let it go. You had to be tough if you wanted to play. So, you know, I was used to that. And, you know, playing in the inside anyway wasn't – I was used to getting fouled. But as you remember, I went to the foul line a lot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> after after your first stint here with UTEX, uh, so you took a break from the PBA. It, you know, your bio, it says you played for the Detroit Spirits of the CBA. And there's yeah. a lot of crazy stories about the CBA, about hotel accommodations and then and, and coaches who, you know. So can you yeah. tell us that experience? How, how was that? I went back. Yeah, I did go there. And uh, I stayed there about a month. Mm. And we got one paycheck. And I let the guy, I was standing, we were standing in line cashing our check. I let the guy go ahead of me. And he he, he cashed his check. I go up to the teller to cash mine. She said, I'm sorry, there's no money in the account. I'm like, what? No money in the account? I said, are you sure? She said, yes. Yeah. So I called the general manager. I said, hey, I uh, couldn't cash my check. When am I going to get paid? Oh, it was a Friday. We'll see on Monday. Uh, talk to me on Monday. I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of wild here. 
So I just went on another month. It happened again. I just said, you know what? It's time for me to go. Send me home. <laughs> Send me home. So from, they, from, uh, from from what I've read, that's that was kind of common in the CBA back in the day. I mean, checks not going yeah. through. Uh, did, did, did that happen often to you, or was that just the one? It only happened. It happened to me twice. So I only stayed a month. We had a good team, and he kept <laughs> telling me, "Oh, I got, I got you. About to get pulled up. You got to, you about to get pulled up." But see, after coming from the Philippines, I was spoiled, pretty much, because mm -hmm. you know you got paid playing with UTEX. You can go up and get your money at any time. It would just sit there. Hey, man, I have X amount of dollars or whatever it was, pesos. And they would pay you, and that you know you kind of when you get used to that, you get spoiled. I was, and then I get paid, and I'm paying rent there, and then I gotta send money home to the family too. I was like, uh, no, let me just go. I'll go back and get a job. So I kept asking them to leave, and they kept putting it off. And finally, they just sent me home. One game, I refused to go in, and I kind of shouldn't have, but I was like, no, no, I'm trying to go home. I'm asking you to send me home. So finally, after that. Send me home. <laughs> what did you do, what did you do in the meantime? I mean, because you know, I came back and went back up to Long Beach State, got a job. They, you know, they took care of me around there, just you know, just working around the school. And then I think later on that year, I ended up coming in replacing somebody, and I played with maybe a month, month and a half with Leroy Jackson. I believe, yeah, yeah. Leroy Jackson, yeah, right. yeah. another former PBA import. That was yep. uh, that was with Tanduay already. Your second stint here in in, in the PBA, and yeah. uh, well, by that time you were a bit familiar with how things go here, how the referees call, how the how the mm -hmm. players do their thing. But you had a new coach that time, so it wasn't Glenn McDonald anymore. It was Freddie Webb with Tanduay, and a yep. bunch of you know different bunch of players. Some guys who I, I believe you would you would remember guys like Ellie Capacho. Oh yeah, and, uh, and uh, Abed Gutierrez and JB Yango and uh, Vic Sanchez. I understand you. You're quite fond of Vic Sanchez. Oh, Vic, mad man, mad dog, as they used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> Vic, Vic was our duke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vic was uh, a was a Rambo. Yeah, too, they called him know? Rambo yeah. eventually. Rambo, Rambo. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> And in that report that Kinito Henson wrote about you a few years ago, you, he said you, you referred to Vic as, aside from Mad Dog, Crazy Horse, you said. Yeah, great. That's, that's what he used to drink. They used to, you know, I had a great time. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't drink, but I never told Ted Dwyer I didn't drink, so I've always had cases of beer at the house. And <laughs> after practice, they would say, get a couple, get, get some cases, because they'll give it to you. And I'm like, well, I don't drink, but I'd ask for the cases. They'd send them over <laughs> <laughs> Half the team would be at the house drinking beer. <laughs> so, you know, I had, uh, oh man, I love Vic. Vic was crazy. <laughs> you know, well, you... about the Philippines, you know, you, you played in the Philippines, you were making a living, but off the court, where did you used to go? Where did you used to hang out? Um, right, where right. did you go shopping a lot? Did you go partying a lot? Uh, no, nah, not too much. Not of that. I should just go down to the base, out to, uh, a longer, no, not a longer pole. Uh, uh, Subic. Clark, Subic. Clark, Subic, yeah. Clark, 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 Clark. And because uh, they had a soul food place out there, somebody had told me about. So we used to drive down there. I used to just go down there and eat and just hang out down there for a while and come That's back. It's a long drive. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was fun. So I, uh, most of the time, it was just going to the movies or renting, you know, uh, Back then it was Betamax. They were only a dollar to rent or 50 <laughs> yeah. cents. So I'd have a stack of, I like Kung Fu. Even if uh -huh. it's in different lanes, I'd have a st <laughs> stack of movies. I'd just sit there and watch all of them. And, you know, it, pretty much that's what I did and go to the movies because compared to the movies out here, compared to there, because, you know, you're still doing stuff in dollars. It was it was cheap. So, yeah, you know, and then going around to a few spots, just sightseeing. Mm-hmm. So, but it, you know, I enjoyed it, every bit of. It. You mentioned you mentioned earlier that you know the the imports tend to become spoiled when they're here in the Philippines. Could you give us an idea of how it was for you? Where were you staying? You know, did was there a personal valet assigned to you, driving you around, and you know, things like you, that? You had the housekeeping. You had the the driver, uh, which I still, when I had a driver, I, after I learned how to get from wherever I needed to go, I would go myself and 
And, you know, even if I ate somewhere, I let the driver, because that's how I was braised up. You didn't have to wait outside. You came in and ate with me. Most of the time, they would tell you, no, I had to make them to come in and eat. And, <laughs> you know, just stuff like that. You know, you had the housekeeping and all that stuff. So, you know, it's it was... Still, I think it's still that way today, uh, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, it that, is. That really changes. Hey, Francois, we're looking at the Facebook uh, live feed right now. Some of the guys are commenting that they don't see your face clearly. Because oh. the camera's against the light. Yeah. So they okay. want, yeah. Is there a way? Me, can, uh, you, can you reconfigure? Me, yeah, switch it around or something like that. Yeah, let me let me switch it a little bit. Because yeah, everyone's eager to see, you know? <laughs> All right. Just against the sun. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be better. Oh, this is going to be better, there yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. There. Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's a, a little bit, bit better, more. Yeah. Oh, I can go against the wall. You can go against the wall. That would be great. Yeah. Because the sun's, Maybe, the sun's yeah. causing you. Uh, yeah, because everyone's yeah. asking. <laughs> yeah. Change all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. They, they, yeah. Sorry, this is, a, this is a TV thing, right? Yeah. They want to see. Got to put, you in, the right, the gotta put you in the right light, you know? So there you go. It's a good sign. Did right you call them the Magnificent Hulk the first time? Or was it somebody that else? Better? Is yeah. that yes, better? better? That is, that is better. Thanks. That Thank is you. better. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So so, yeah. Uh, so when you were in the Philippines, you had so much fun. And you brought your wife along the first time around, mm -hmm. and she was pregnant. Yeah. So Bonita gave birth to Bonita at Makati Med, right? Yes, yeah, she was born at Makati Medical Center, yes. Matter of fact, uh, that's where I was born. Days today, <laughs> June 19th. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, last week. Yeah. Just celebrate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she did celebrate. I, I did greet uh, Bonita also, uh, but but then did, did you um, did, did you think about you know settling down in the Philippines after all of the success, after all of the popularity that you're getting? They say, hey, we can move over here. We could just have a pretty good life. You know, no, I never crossed crossed my mind because all my family was in San Francisco. It was it at the, it was ten of us. You know, I had ten siblings or nine mm -hmm. siblings plus me. And so that never crossed my mind. I, but, you know, I tried to, I really didn't go anywhere else and played. And after 87, I just started, you know what? <clears throat> I'm done with playing because I had the two young ones. And then uh, mm -hmm. my second son, Cameron, was born while I was, he was born. And at that time, I was playing for, uh, after I left Hills, brother, I went and played for Mal uh, Michelle Luya down in Cebu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah, Cebu, yeah. down in, uh, that was Cebu. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was Cebu. It was Cebu. If it's yeah. Lulia, yeah. it's probably Cebu, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, went down there and played there because we ended up, end up going to Indonesia <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. Jakarta. And we went to Singapore, playing a couple of turners with, with them. And then I had came back in between the time because my son was being born. And then after, two days after he was born, I came back to go to Singapore. Or was Singapore? For, one of them was first, can't remember. But after that, I just said, you know what? Just let me get me a job. You know, mm -hmm. so I just started... <laughs> Started working and processing to get on the police department and got lucky and got on. Well, before all of that happened, uh, I think it was in 1985, you tried to do something else besides oh. uh, play <laughs> basketball. <laughs> and you yeah. tried to be an American football player. Tell us about that. Journey. You know what? I was I was playing in that summer league we, that we was talking about. And an agent after the game came up and approached me and, you know, introduced himself. And he said, I'm an agent in football. And I'm like, okay. He said, if I got you a trial with the Rams, would you go? I'm like, got nothing to lose. Sure, why not? Because they had uh, somebody that they had trans that played basketball at SC, James McDonald. And they transferred him. Coach Robinson transferred him into football tight player. End. Tight end. Yeah. So I was like, sure, why not? So and this was in 87 or 86. Uh -huh. So what happened was uh, two weeks later, I gave him my number. Two weeks later, I get a call. Uh, I got you a trial with the Rams. I was like, what? Is this a joke? He was like, no, nah, go down to Ram Park and see Jack Faulkner, the general manager. I was like, okay. So I went down there and uh, introduced myself. He said, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I heard about you. As a matter of fact, he called up Lawrence McCutcheon, former football player. He mm -hmm. said, go work him out and tell me what you think. So he came out, got me some gear. He just playing football, just going out on passes. I caught everything except for the deep one because he overthrew me. And uh, he said, okay, okay, I see enough. I'm like, is that it? He said, yeah. I said, well, what do you think? He said, I will sign you and work with you, but it's not my decision. He said, I'll tell, I'll tell the general manager. So a couple of weeks later, guy called me back and said, they want to sign you, but not for this year, for next year. You'll be on the 
You'll just work out. You can't work out with the team right now, but you can come down every day to Ram Park. We'll pay you. We'll get you with a trainer. You'll train football stuff. And then when mini camp come, you go to camp the following year. So that's how that started. They paid me, gave me a signing bonus. And every day after work, I'd go down there and work out. You know, they paid me every Friday to come down to work out every day. I work out with the trainer, lifting weights was something I was doing anyway, but just football stuff, <laughs> hitting the sled, all the football related stuff. And then when the mini camp came around, I went to the mini camp. And when camp came around, I went to the camp. But they ended up cutting me in camp because they ended up having, what, seven tight ends? <laughs> he said, <"Yeah." laughs> they could have moved you to the so, defense, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, that's what they say. So you tried out for something like that. You probably would still be here. We work with you. But we got seven tight ends. And we just drafted a rookie. Uh-huh. And I said, well, you told me that's what I did. You asked me what I want to play. I'm not a football player. Uh-huh. So they said, go, you know, go play in uh, semi-pro and come on back next year and, and you know, try out again. I'm like, no, I'm not doing all that. <laughs> But yeah. did you have prior did you have prior experience playing American football? Other than playing tackle football in the streets on the grass, nothing organized. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. So so 1987, uh, you played for your in your final year uh, in the PBA, and then um, what was it like leaving the Philippines in 1987, knowing that you might not be able, you might not be coming back for a long time. Yeah, you know, I didn't think I wouldn't be coming back, but you know, after that, it was. Uh, of course, I missed it first. You know, first couple of years, missed it. You know, keeping up with it, and after that, you know, once I got on the police department, it was just channeled to something else. And you know, I, I'd hear about it. Uh, every time I'd be out and about, I'd run into somebody that's Filipino, and we get to talking, and they said, "You know, that name sounds familiar," and I would tell them it. We just reminisce. Oh, I remember you when I was a kid growing up there, or something like that. So I do know they really follow that PBA. Over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need to take you back, uh, Francois, to 1985 when you played for uh-huh. Manila Beer. Yeah. Uh huh. So when you played for Manila Beer, you know you guys actually made the finals. It was tough because you played against the the national team in the finals back then. But but yeah. that was a, that was a great uh, conference for for your team. So do you remember your experiences playing in, in uh, 1985 we, for 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 that? You uh, know, we squad? didn't. We didn't have, we didn't stand a chance against that team because they had uh, Dennis Steele, Cardo, Dennis Steele, Moore, yeah. and then uh, Chip England, Chip England, Chip England, and then they had their players. So we, you know, it was just what I don't even think. We, I think we lost four straight, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. it was four straight. Uh huh. I they mean, we were wasn't beating them. That, that team was loaded. Plus, with the local players they had, was just loaded. We wasn't beating that. We were just trying yeah. to make it competitive, or still a game or two. But you know, we had. Uh, you know, we had worked hard that year, that season to, to get there. We had a great team at Tend Why because uh, uh, Mon Fernandez came over, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. 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 Moan came over, and then we had another big man that was. Uh, Yo Yo Vidalino. Yeah. Yo Yo Vidalino. You know, we had, as a matter of fact, our Troy Cole was on that team too. So, right. yeah. wasn't mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, he yeah. was. He was. Yeah. Right. That was a good team, but he uh-huh. just ran up against the RP team. And it just any other team we'd have beat, we'd have won that championship. But yeah, everybody yeah. was expecting a great taste to make the finals uh, that that mm-hmm. conference. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, know, yes. you upset great taste, and you <laughs> you made it instead. We end up uh, beating. Uh, we up. Uh, we upset Hanebra too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. With uh, yeah. Michael Hackett. Yeah, yeah, I, right, I remember right, that. Right. Yeah, that was uh, a <laughs> yeah, that, that semifinals. Uh, Francois, <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna go through some photos. So. Your playing career uh-huh. in the PBA. Uh, I'm, uh, can you see uh, these? Yeah, you click one to make it bigger. Yeah, yeah, make it. Yeah, this bigger. is uh, this is you going against Mon Fernandez. That one. Could you click, click one to make it bigger? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to get that one. Come you need to enlarge it. It's looking like they're all thumbnails right, right now. Come on, sit on in there. Click on one of them. You all know Eric here. Hey, hey how's it going? You? Oh. Hi, Eric. Hey, Eric. What's up, hey, man? How you doing? <laughs> Eric. Can you see the, you? the photo? I'm good. Uh, I can it's see not, thumbnails. It's not are you trying to enlarge it? Yeah. Those are thumbnails. Those are thumbnails right now, Sid. Hmm? We can see yeah. thumbnails. Yeah. You might want to reconfigure. Yeah. Exit we, and uh, share or, again. Or, or, or reshare, yeah. Uh, turn it off and then share it again. Uh, I'll share it again, okay. See. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, there you I'll, go. I'll do it again. Hey, Eric. Uh, 
Maybe I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's he the one that needs to be back over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He played for for, every, for everyone well. that's watching right now, uh, that's that's Eric Wise. He played here in the Philippines as well. Second generation. I just wrote about second generation. You know, I, I, I wrote about dads and sons that played in the PBA just for Father's Day last Sunday. And, of mm. course, we mentioned you guys. Yeah. yeah. It was fun out there. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Who's your I'll, best friend of that again. Morocco Bull team, uh, Eric? <laughs> okay, there it is. That's, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, this is better. This is better. That's better. Yeah. yeah. Can, you see, can you see that's that's Mon Fernandez that you're going Mon Fernandez. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's Mike Bilbao right behind him, who we just talked okay. to last week. Yeah. And then uh... you talk to him again. Tell him I said hello. Oh, I will. I'll message him uh -huh. later. My favorite actually, team I, was I don't know if we're going to see it. There's actually a magazine cover with you and and Mike Bilbao uh, yeah, going think, up against each other. Yeah, this was the. You this was the that. story. Yeah. yeah. This was the story written. Oh. Okay. You. There you go. Uh, yeah, way to go for Tanduay. Storybook entry into the quarterfinals. And there you are. You're slamming it yeah, home right yeah, there. Yeah, you're slamming it home. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know who this import is, but you... That's Rich Adams. You, that's oh, Rich okay. Adams. So, Sam, that's uh, Sam Miguel, right? Yeah, Sam I, Miguel. No, I think he was Rich Adams was with Enrich. Great taste. Right? Oh, yeah, okay. Great taste. Okay. Enrich, yeah. And Frankie Lim's trying to stop it. That's yeah. Frankie Lim hanging on to <laughs> Rich Adams. Looks like you and Rich are about to go at it. I look you like know Frankie's what? Because I'm the, nervous. I'm the godfather of Frankie's daughter. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, which one? The, the first one, the second one? I believe it was the first one he had when when I was there. Asked me to be the godfather. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, you look the pretty second... nervous trying to break up this fight. And uh, well, <laughs> if you think Frankie's nervous, so you look at the referees like. In the middle uh, yeah. of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I pity that oh, number eight, there. the referee right there, Francois. Look at him. And, you know, he, I'm sure he, he, he was fearing for his life. Right yeah. at <laughs> and then this is you against, I think, Dennis Still. That's the yeah, finals. That's yeah, these are the finals. Yeah. 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 yeah, we we just mentioned that. Uh, is, there, is there any significant reason you chose number five as your jersey number? Yeah. No, nah, I was just moving around. I had eight. I had five. I had number two. Just, just picking them. I, lo I love the fro, though. Huh? The yeah, fro. yeah. This was the, the year that you had, had an afro. Yeah, I remember this. Went from that to this. <laughs> and, and here, uh, this is the yeah. article. And Mike Bilbao wrote this. He was writing oh, an article he? in a magazine. Yeah, he yeah. wrote it. And he called it Francois yeah. Joseph Weiss, the impossible horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I remember that. Yeah. He, uh, what was your relationship like with Mike Bilbao? It seems that you guys were pretty close. Uh, me and Mike was was real close. You know, he was a general of the team and always got, got me the ball in the right position. Great floor general, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, can't say much about him other than, you know, super friendly. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy playing with him. Yeah, when he had that accident, you had to be there for him too, right? Yep. That's right. You played in the benefit game that they had for for Mike. Uh huh. Which so you're talking you about? He's, all in, he's in Palm Beach. Huh? Yeah, he's in Palm Beach. Yeah, he's in Palm he's Beach. Beach. He's retired there. Yeah, he's this, is the, uh, this is the list of imports in the '85 Rainforce Conference that where you guys finished second behind Manila Beer. So right. we'll go through them. This is Michael Hackett of Hinebra. Huh. This is the conference he scored 103 points. Yeah. And then yeah, Corey Blackwell, great taste. Mm-hmm. Then Norman Black, then you here with the Manila beer, and then Lester Rowe, Lester Rowe. of yeah. Shell, and Ronnie Valentine of uh, of Tandwai. Do you remember all of these guys? Yeah, I remember Ronnie. Ronnie can score with the best of them. And, you know, uh -huh. we all know Michael. Michael had the big hands. Plus, he he played with Hinebra, so got all the calls. You couldn't even breathe on him. <laughs> Every last call. I love that you couldn't even breathe on him. That's a that's a great line. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Plus, he, he used to foul a lot himself. Yeah. <laughs> but among, among, the, among the players here, Francois, is Norman Black, and he went on to be a legend in the PBA. Uh, tell me about your relationship with Norman Black. I mean, we, we were friendly on the court. We didn't hang out or anything, but huh? I know he was a tough guard because he was always moving. You know, I'm used to guarding people in the post, and he was more of a forward, and he was just nonstop, always moving. So it made it tough to guard him. I just have to say, you know what? 
put somebody else on him because I'm not going to finish this game chasing him around, <laughs> constantly well, moving, trying to get the ball. No. Yeah. yeah. They, call, they called him Mr. 100%. You know, he still coaches uh, up to today. He coaches one of the teams oh, okay. in the PBA until now. Because he he's, married he's uh, Benji Alvarez, right? Yeah. Right. You know, nice person. You know, we never had any, right. nothing but respect each other on the court, but I didn't like gardening. Move too much. <laughs> way too much. <laughs> I don't I remember Lester Roto too much. Yeah, I, I don't know if he stayed there the whole time. Yeah, it might have might probably not didn't have stayed right? there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if we're gonna see a, if we're gonna see a picture of Billy Ray Bates there. That's another guy that's no, pretty tough to contain. I don't, contain. I don't think uh, I don't think and I have it. That fool was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is crazy in a good way or uh, <laughs> ooh. Well, really? is it crazy in a good way or a bad way. <laughs> On the court, he was a tear. But when you see him off the court or something, you see him around town, and and I I didn't drink, and he come on drink with me, man. I don't drink, and boy, he can put down some alcohol, man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to yeah. be around. <laughs> You're one of them where you that had a lot of alcohol. It's time for yeah. you to leave. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just some that he was consuming, right? <laughs> yeah, we we had. You know, uh, he, he, wanted wanted that, he wanted in that probably can drink before the game and come out there. You see what he did? Yeah. I mean, he was unbelievable. Same thing yeah, he, when he was at Portland. Yeah, he drink and still score sixty in the PBA. This is the way we used in the poster uh, against uh -huh. Ricky Relosa. and I think Ricky right. was one of the guys who were was known as an enforcer, like yourself, in the PBA. Right. right. Yeah, they yeah, have. You is, know what yeah. they? You know, a lot of them they they would guard you tough, but you know, if I got it in the right position and they didn't have any help, there wasn't no help. For the, I was scoring. They was either going to yeah. score, I was yeah. going to get them with the pump fake, they was going to file, but, you know, it was, you know, I loved it. Okay. Yeah, the, the headline here is, are the Manila beer men for real? Uh, because, yeah, as uh, Charlie mentioned, that conference, uh, Great Taste was the favorite team to, to go for a Grand Slam, but you, uh, you guys crashed the party and made yep. it all the way to the finals. Uh, for losing the RP team. Yeah. And yeah, there's another one, Manila Beer. This is yeah, against uh, Ronnie Valentine, I think. I don't I don't think he stayed the whole season either, did he? I don't, I don't think I, so. I don't think yeah. so. I, I don't think he did. But yeah, at least he stayed a lot around until uh, until this shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is a one oh, wow. from your this is yeah. nice. in that sunny it's, right there. Yeah, yep, that's the whole Toyota team right there. Yeah, sunny. Yeah, it says, uh, Arnie, Toyota Arnie in action. Twilight, right? When yeah. that Arnie Twilight right here. No, when it's no, it's it's Mon Fernandez, Ricky Relosa, Jaworski, and Arnais. Arnais, yeah. that's uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Francis Arnais. He's in yeah, San Francisco, yeah. isn't he? I heard he was in yeah. San Francisco. Yes. yes, we also had him uh, as our guest uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Somewhere near Sacramento, I think, right? Okay. Yeah, suburb of uh, Sacramento. I, I, I guess I drew a crowd on that one. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole team. <laughs> this is probably 83. Yeah. Because look at how, close, Toyota, look at how close Jaworski is to you. Did, was he poking you in the back or something <laughs> while he was trying to get the ball? You know, he was doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and well, then you with your oh, glorious wow. afro. Uh, At, that there was in college. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that was my senior year in college. I took that picture. Wow. And then, okay, here's your retirement uh, poster. Retirement. Yeah, all my yeah. dogs down there. <laughs> Family <laughs> in the was... background. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later on. But uh, boy, what a career you had, not just in basketball, but with the LAPD as well. Yeah, 30 years. Yep. It's you and your daughter. Hey, Bonita. Hey, <laughs> happy Father's birthday, day. Bonita. <laughs> <laughs> See you in there. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. There. That's this one here on his way to, where were you leaving to? He was headed somewhere. Uh, Finland, and it was crazy because Larry Pounds lives in Finland for the team. His son played on the team I was on. And he oh, works wow. on the team. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a small world. He, we're talking yeah, Larry Pounds won a, right won a there. championship with San Miguel. Oh, Royal Tro Orange. 1979. Yeah. That was the first That's before, championship uh, of San Miguel. Francois came over. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. They've won right. like 20 something since. 
Uh, this no. is a photo from our uh, photographer, Ernie Sarmiento. This is also from the 85 Reinforced. Uh, this yeah. is Michael Hackett. And uh, I think it's Frankie Limon trying to undercut, got away, him. Huh? <laughs> undercut him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joya William in yeah. Got away a lot. <laughs> That's Jaworski? <laughs> no, no. No, no, it wasn't. I think that was, uh -huh. uh, and this is up against Shell, I think, also, in the Ultra. Yeah, that's you again. Now, see, that's uh, when they had moved the game to the University of Life, right? Those, that's yeah. A, yes. The Ultra. Yeah. The, the, the Ultra. new, uh, yeah, the newer venue. And then, and then yeah, there's another one against Shell. I don't remember who this guy is in the airport. Uh, uh, yeah, Eric, while you're there, can I just ask you, did your dad give you any advice when he, uh, he found out you were going to play in the PBA? Yep. He said, uh, play hard. Uh, you have to do a lot. Or you, as you can see, get sent home. You have to win. It doesn't matter about points. And, uh, and don't worry about the fouls. And they play aggressive. I remember after the games, I was tired. Like, those are one times in my career where I was, like, tired after the game. Just sit in bed. It was like... Uh, brutal. It was hard. They played hard out there. But I went in there in great shape, though, so luckily it wasn't too bad. Yeah, you had 33, I think, in your first game. Oh, you played well. I remember. You played <laughs> yeah, yeah well. I did. I was surprised that uh, they let you go. Yeah, yeah, I was, too. But when I figured it out, we weren't winning, so that's what matters. Yeah. I was thinking I would hopefully be able to come get back there one day, but it haven't been, haven't been able to happen yet, so we'll see. Yeah, hopefully we, can, we get to see you again here. Yeah. Well, if he Did goes back, the I'll be over there to watch. For, yeah, no yeah, you, should, you, you two should come over. If, if someone gets uh, Eric to play over here, then, then yeah. Daddy should come along because a lot of guys I'll want be to there. see you. I'll be there, for sure. Some, I, guy, I, I, uh, oh, my bad. some reporter gave me some old pictures of him. They were like really pictures. It was funny. He had an afro <laughs> and then some <laughs> tight pants on or whatever he was wearing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I, and I, and I, Eric, I sent, you, I sent you some too. I sent you some oh, too. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You always yeah. send me pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And then articles. But I don't know. I, I got I got uh, disconnected for a bit. Uh, did you guys talk about uh, your reunion with Yoyo Villamin and Hills Brothers? Because you said, yeah, he played with you in, in Manila Beer, Yoyo Villamin. And then in 87, yeah. when you went came back with Hills Brothers, he was your teammate again. And he had a really great season. That was his yeah, best did. season, in, in fact. Uh, you see, you see, yo, yo, yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, it's, it's good. How about Billy Ray Bates? Did we talk about Billy Ray Bates? Not yet, but we do yo-yo first. Well, yeah, we uh, <laughs> Francois briefly talked about how crazy briefly. he was. And, that he's crazy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. How we like to drink. <laughs> he he came out there with a Superman cape on, remember? Yep, yep, yeah. They even made a shoe. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they made a shoe for him. Yeah, they did. They did. And uh, we had Bernie Fabiosa as a guest uh, a couple of weeks ago. Bernie, of course, was uh, Billy's teammate, his first stint here in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And he, uh, Bernie had this story about uh, uh, during practice, he would smell alcohol off of Billy Ray's uh, breath. And it turns out uh, his, water, his water jug contained uh, gin. You know, so he had it during practice. Wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but then he'd go out and score 50 yeah. or 60 the following yeah. night. So he, he was another one, just nonstop. Just, man, just nonstop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, his and coach did, did you said. Did smell uh, alcohol in his breath when you were guarding him? <laughs> <laughs> That's not too far from the truth, right? No. No, I think Tommy Manotta, their coach, gave him a rule. Okay, I know you're drinking, but please, during the games, uh, please be sober during the games. That's, I think that was the rule that his coach uh, lay down. So, hey, I mean, during games, talent, don't drink. With his talent for what he did there, I mean, he kind of just let him go. <laughs> just yeah. stay out of trouble. Let him go, yeah. Are we gonna, are we gonna talk about your, your, let's talk a bit about your, your elder brother, Willie. Um, and his, okay. his uh, Hall of Fame ABA career. I mean, you know, that was a that was a great stint. If you read about him, he was one of the best on both ends, and respected by all these these guys who people call great. You know, Dr. J and and, and Dan Issel and and all these guys, George McGinn. If they all respected your brother, you know, watching him grow up, how how was he as an example for you? You know, he set the perfect example. He you know he taught me basically the fundamentals first. Just come out with footwork shooting 
all of it. You know, attitude. You had to have attitude when he's out there on the court and, and to play hard. And the main thing he really stressed was defense. And he would always say, you know, just watch a player, whoever it is you guard, take away what he doesn't like to do. Force him to do something he doesn't want to do. And so I learned that when I'm guarding people to just sit there and see what they like to do. And when they like to do it, just take it away from them, make them work extra hard to get it. And, you know, he used to take me everywhere when he was younger. Matter of fact, he used to play in the semi-pro league when I was a youngster. He used to let me play a couple of times with the older guys. I was on the team here. I was in the ninth grade playing with all these older guys, 20, 30, 35, playing in the league. And they let me get in a minute or two in the game and, mm -hmm. and in practice and stuff. So that's how I learned how not to call a foul, just play through the contact. When you're playing with the older guys, you're not getting it, period. He wasn't getting it. But I learned a lot from him. You know, basically, just how to be a man, and you know, he taught me a lot about the game. So, how much older is he than you? He's eleven years older than I am. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's a that's a lot of so, experience so, to share. Okay. Plus, you yeah, know, he, used to, he used to fly me in when he was with it, me in the, on the pro circuit. He'd fly me in. We'd sit there and watch the games and stuff like that. And uh, I remember going to the at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake when he was with the Utah Stars. I went to that All Star, what they called All Star Weekend. Now I was there. And, uh, you know, that was, that was huge, you know, for him to be in an all-star game, just being around all the players and Julius Irving and all of them. So I remember one time my sister was there, my older sister, and she walked up. They was at a party that night, a fashion show or some of that nature. And she, uh, she said, hey, Julius, uh, my brother right here want to play you one on one, and then he said, "In public or private?" <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think I was in the seventh or eighth grade when she said that. He said, "In public or private?" <laughs> Didn't want to get embarrassed. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but you know, just just for everyone's uh, information, we're talking about the elder brother of, of Francois Willie Weiss, who who was a star in the ABA, and I think the ABA doesn't get the you know the respect that it deserves, mm -hmm. but he was a great yeah. player. Over there, and uh, you know that's why we're talking about him. He played against some of the greats. He played for the Utah Stars and the Virginia Squires. Also played in the NBA for a couple of years, right, Francois? He went to uh, yeah. Denver for one year, and then he went to Seattle. Uh, halfway through, he ended up hurting his uh, foot again, and he just left from there because he had already had like six surgeries on his ankle oh, prior, wow. and he just called it a day. So he ended up having like seven surgeries while he was playing ball. He just said he's done. That's it. Still living in Seattle to this day. <laughs> okay. You know, Francois, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people ask you this, but I'm just going to go ahead and ask you anyway. Why Why did, where were you given the name Francois? I mean, you're the only Francois that personally I know in my entire life. So what is the, uh, yes. did, your, did your parents grow up in France or something? Nope. Yeah. According, to my, according to my oldest brother, he named me. He said he got tired of these American names. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Name, really? No, and, so, and you do have a brother named Pierre. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, so he, Pierre he said Francois. he named us two. So he says okay. we're the only two with the French <laughs> names out of the other eight names: Willie, Arthur. You know, my, then I got six sisters. So he <laughs> he just said he did it. I'm you know, like I said, me and my younger brother only had the two French names. <laughs> Like I certainly know That's my parents didn't do it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> they just they just bought yeah. into it afterwards, huh? Yeah, he he <laughs> named. It. So according to him, that's what that's what he said. So after yeah. after guarding after guarding uh you know all these other imports and then the big guys, you started uh, guarding other things. You became a policeman. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, yeah. Can you tell actually, us about I, that? actually I was trying to be a fireman, so I was taking the test. I was on the hiring process for a whole year. And then I went back, I had a, once after a year, you had to start the process over. So I went down there and uh, here's my daughter right here. This is Benita. Hey, Bonita. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys? Hello. Hey, happy right. birthday. We're having fun. <laughs> okay, okay, na man. I'll see you guys too. Nice to talk to you guys. All right, Eric. All right, nice All right. to see you, Eric. Good to see you, Eric. So I, uh, Went down and the lady said, you know what, you didn't get hired for the fire department. Why don't you uh, uh, apply for the police department? I said, I don't want to be a police officer. She said, you didn't get hired for the fire department. What you got to lose? So I just filled out both paperwork. And, and, and that's how that came about. And I, you know what, I just started processing. 
And matter of fact, the day I came back was that uh, in 87. The day I left to come back and play that season in 87, my wife got the call. You got the interview. Uh, you passed the written test. They, you, you set up for an interview. I had a call up there and tell them I'm doing some military stuff right now. Can I take it when I get back? And they just said, oh, yeah, he can reschedule it when he got back. So I wouldn't play that 87 season. And then when I got back, I started processing. But I had took the test like a couple of days before I left. Okay. And, you know, that's how I ended up getting, you know, getting on the police department, ended up liking it and, you know, enjoying it, trying to help people, just being out there. But I'm glad I'm out right now because too much going on right now. I was going to ask yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 Mm. Good That's timing, fine. too. But I see a lot of pictures of you with your dogs. I mean, were you part of that canine unit for a very long time, or is that just something no. that you just moved into? You know, I just uh, actually, I just started breeding dogs. So I got uh, eight of them here right now, which is the pictures you saw, some of them. And just, you know, just got into doing it. Just and it wasn't planning on having eight dogs, but that's how many I got right now. Mm-hmm. What's your most yeah. memorable, uh, what's your most memorable uh, occurrence or the most memorable, well, best memory of you as a police officer? Well, a couple of years ago, a guy came back and uh, said, you remember me? And I really, I was like, no, nah, no. He said, I can, my sister brought me to the station because I was acting up when I was a kid. And he said, right now, I really appreciate the way you talk to me. You kind of scared the daylights out of me. You took me back in that cell and let me sit for a while. He <laughs> said, this is what's going to happen to you. I just want to know. I turned my life around. I'm, I'm in the service now. And that kind of wow. you know, wow. yeah. made me feel pretty good right there. Because that's what we that's try to do great. is help. Right, and right. we have people coming in all the time wanting you to talk to their kids. Because, you know, a lot of them, Right now, the way it is, they don't want to put their hands on the kids, really no discipline. You see what we have right now. And I just try to talk to them, try to scare them a little bit. <laughs> you know, talk to them like, hey, keep on going, doing what you're doing. You're going to see us every day. You're going to be sitting right back here in this tank. And, you know, with that one, you know, every now and then you get one. The rest of them is like, screw you, keep on doing what they're doing. But this guy took the time to come back. And I just happened to be working that day when he did. So he said, I turned my life around. I got a family. I'm living in Vegas, but I really appreciate what you did for me. Great story. Great. Right there was right there was worth it. Yeah. How about uh, how about uh, Manny Pacquiao walking into the station one time? Uh, that was that was from uh, what, 12 years ago. It was 12. It was, was that, 12 I years think ago. he I think he was gonna fight Marquez. I think. Yeah, huh? 2008. Uh, 2008. Yeah, 2000. Okay, I fought four I'm, times. I'm working yeah. the desk, and I seen him come in, but it was kind of late, close to me. Quitting, quitting time for me, so I wasn't working overtime, so I wasn't going to try to help him. At the time, I'm like, let somebody else do it, because I'm leaving. I don't want to work overtime. So I just had my head down doing what I was doing, and it was about four of them. And so I didn't even look up. And then uh, I heard him talking to Gallo, so I looked up, and I looked over, and I couldn't think of his name at the time. I was like, aren't you, uh... and forget it. Pac-Man, right? <laughs> and then he said, right, right. Pac -Man, right? And then he said, yeah. I said, so I got up and uh, walked over and introduced myself. And I said, man, I used to play ball over there. And, and the rest of them then, uh, about that time, a couple of them had uh, saw my name tag. And they, you know, everybody kind of don't get my name right. They said, Franciosa Weiss? I said, yeah, he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Fran -Fran> Franciosa. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Manny said, oh, I remember you. So, you know, we took a picture. And then later on, it just so happened that one of his bodyguards was a detective at the station. And when I found that out, I just said, you know what? I'm going to get this picture blown up. Uh, can you take me up there and have an autograph? He said, man, when they, yeah, we'll catch them when they're coming back and working out. So he went up there and he autographed it for me. Great. Uh -huh. what, what was yeah. Manny Pacquiao doing at your police station? He yeah, came in. <laughs> He ended up doing a report. I think somebody had got into his account for about ninety thousand or something like that. Whoa! Wow. Okay. He stored it. He got into it. Something like that. So, you know, we ended up doing a report. But I let my partner up at the desk finish it. I was just helping him out. He the one that actually took it because I was leaving. But he was a youngster on the job. I told him what he needed to do and all that old stuff. Because, you know, at that time they was really kind of 
didn't want you working overtime, but I didn't want to work overtime anyway. But I made sure he got that. He ended up taking the report. So kind of like a report for Manny. Somebody like Manny come in, of course, the detective's going to come out and kind of take it. You may just do the face sheet, but they'll take it over and kind of write it up and stuff like that. You know, when the celebrities come in, that's how that go. You just do the little uh, name, address, all that profession, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, suspect. But then when actually when it come to writing it, detectives come out and take it. So what happened to it after that, I couldn't tell you because it's kind of hush-hush. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got right, right. Manny status come in, so... Yeah. And that's how I ended up made, you know, meeting him. I was surprised when he said, I know who you are. I remember you. <laughs> he's, he's a big basketball guy. He actually yeah. played yeah. in the PBA. I don't he know if you heard about that. He actually played in the PBA. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. But he, he actually uh, got drafted and then he was a playing coach, you know, quote unquote, for the, for the coach. team. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, speaking of the PBA, before we continue, uh, one of the PBA players, is watching right now his name is Harvey Carey and he said that his father Harvey Carey senior was the best friend of one of your brothers uh, he didn't mention which brother but uh, I think it's he's, he's probably talking about uh Willie oh was it Willie what's what's oh, the name wow. Harvey Harvey Carey, Carey. Carey. Yeah. isn't he, he from San Francisco right yeah Bay Area yeah. Guy. yes Bay part Bay of the city ball group mm -hmm. yeah he's talking about I believe my older brother I believe mm -hmm. I believe yeah yeah he says he grew up watching your nephew uh, Jaha. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. My nephew, uh, Jaha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so since, he, since, yeah, since you no, mentioned Harvey Carey already, you know, we, we, I, I, I told you this before we went on the air about the city ball group, you know, that Facebook group, huh? uh, with all huh? the, the ballers from San Francisco. Can you tell us about that, that group? Uh, I think it's led by Joe Belfry. Yeah. You know what? Joe Belfry was, uh, uh, he's a Filipino American. Right? Huh? He could be. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, when I was a senior, he came over and, and took over the point guard position for us as a freshman. Because at that, at that time, high school started at the uh, ninth grade, 10th grade, 10th, 11th, 12th. So he came in as a freshman. He more or less played with my brother for two years. But he came in and, you know, did great for us. We won the, we won the city, went to tournament champions, we lost in the, in the championship game of that tournament. And then he just about four or five years ago, he just started the city ball and he just blew up, you know, just blew up getting just chit chatting with former players, everybody that played, recognizing them and, you know, everybody's champ, you know, chiming in on who did this back when. And, you know, it's just a great group thing he got going now. I think they got a restaurant they opened up in Antioch mm -hmm. in the, you know, outside the Bay Area now. Oh, so, nice area. man, because I normally don't get on social media and all that stuff, but I see uh -huh. the stuff, I really don't comment on it and I just kind of keep to myself pretty much. <laughs> well, Harvey, Harvey already commented, he says it's Arthur. Yeah, my older brother, I, you yeah, know, his yeah. his best friend was Harvey. You know, I thought about that. Yeah, my yeah. older brother had passed yeah. away. So yeah, it mm -hmm. was his best friend, Harvey. That's his son. Also, oh, Ray Lasso is watching. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what's up, Ray? <laughs> he's in Miami. Yeah, he's, he's oh, based okay. in Miami. Yeah. He's based in Miami, so he gets to he gets to watch a lot of the Heat games because he he provides the manpower for the stadium. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the NBA going down there now, back in uh, Disney World down there. Huh? Well, we'll Starting see how it goes. Know. You know, everybody. <laughs> there's, there's a whole bunch <laughs> so of guys getting of COVID tested positive there now. <laughs> yeah. A lot of yeah, the players are tested positive. So I don't know. Uh -huh. I know we'll see. A few days. To, you know, they have to they have to weigh that and yeah. see how that goes. Um, how do you feel about the Long Beach uh, State? the team being called the beach now instead of the 49ers Francois. you know what i really haven't since i left i haven't really <laughs> and they didn't actually sign my son they should have but he ended up playing you know he started out at irvine mm -hmm. and i would go down there of course when they played each other twice a year my son used to punish them but they didn't they didn't really recruit him so i don't really keep up with them <laughs> There's a uh, there, there's a former Long Beach State player who who's been playing in the PBA the past three or four years. He reminds a lot of people of you. You know, the, the, this guy reminds him of you. His name's Eugene Phelps. Oh, Eugene Phelps. I don't know if you know him, but he's, he's a big, strong guy, and he yeah, he is a Francois Wise clone. <laughs> I, I know him. He used to my son used to eat him up. Oh yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> hey, would you talk to him? Ask him about my son. <laughs> all right, I will do that if he does come back because they've been getting him. Uh, you know, he's like a resident import for yeah. one of the teams yeah. now. Yeah, I, yeah, about, know, I think... about six, eight, six, seven, right? 
Yeah, he's a good yeah, player, yeah. though. Yeah. They I, call I him uh, El Destructor. Eric, Eric, yeah, Eric played for Barocco Bull, and when Barocco Bull folded, that team became Phoenix, and the team that huh? um, uh, Eugene plays for, that's Phoenix now. Oh, okay. So pretty much he replaced Eric in that in that uh, in that franchise. Well, yeah, because I watched him play uh, man, for four years. And, you know, Eric ended up, well, three, because Eric first three years, then he left and went to SC. But, uh, yeah, I know who Eugene Phelps is. He used to play mm-hmm. center for Long Beach, about six, seven, six, eight. Yeah. Did you see there. yourself in him, or was it was it a different dimension altogether? I mean, yeah, I, I can see that. You know, he's a, he's a good player, good rebounder, strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, mostly played inside a lot. That's right. Good That's leaper, right. rebounder. So, mm-hmm. I can see that. Right. Well, you know, you're in the police force already. Since 87, you're in the police force. But then your kids start growing up and start becoming athletes as well. Of course, your eldest, mm-hmm. Bonita, who, who's been to the Philippines, who's pretty right. much like you, just, just took in the culture in the Philippines. Of course, Eric played in the PBA. Uh, what uh, was it like now coaching future or, or raising future athletes in your household? You know what? I just kind of, with her, I just kind of, Started her out with basketball, but her main thing was soccer. And then uh, the high school I had, she went to North had a big, huge women's, one of the best women's programs around for basketball. So I took her over there to practice, and she was really okay. Wasn't really a basketball player, more of a, a soccer player, because that's what she grew up playing. And she made the uh, varsity team, you know, just the tryouts right for the summer. And then the coach told her, well, I don't want you playing soccer because you stick, you're going to play just basketball. And she came back and said, Dad, I don't, I don't want to play uh, basketball because they won't let me play soccer. I just said, well, you know what? I'm not going to force you to. But she said, but I'm going to play volleyball. I'm going to say, you ain't never played no volleyball before. We, we go. So I'm going to play. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Support whatever she's doing. And yeah. she got out there and, and made varsity. And then ended up becoming a star on that team, thanks to you know her coach just worked with her. And after the end of her, her her freshman year, I was like, wow. And then she just kept getting better and better. And then you know got that scholarship to Cincinnati, uh-huh. and uh, you know make all league every year, freshman of the year back there in that league in Cincinnati. And she just kept on going, playing 14 years overseas. So now she just trains and and teaches. That sort of reminds me of, of, of her dad. You know, her dad played American football without playing a single down before that. Right. <laughs> yeah, but she was good at it. With Eric, I had Eric's travel team. I had all my boys, I coached all their travel team, me and, a, and, me and a former college player of mine. And then on that same travel team, we had Drew Holiday. Hmm. He, he, we had Drew Holiday from fifth grade to, to high school. And once they got to high school, I said, that's it now. You are... You know, I'm done coaching you. You got to move on to, you know, better coaches in this high school travel season. So, but yeah, I had him, man. Him, man, Drew Holiday. Was and, he you know, he just, already since fifth grade? Drew Holiday. I met him. I was doing uh, security at a bowling alley on the weekends. And he came in one day with his parents and he had just had a trophy. Like they just had a party somewhere. And, uh, I said, oh, what grade are you in? He said, the fifth grade. I was like, fifth grade? Okay, I got a team. I said, where you live? Now, I'm out in the valley, and I'm the team out here in the Inland Empire, about 70 miles away. And uh, he said, oh, I live out in Fontana. I was like, wow, that's where the team is. You know, we, we practice on Tuesday and Thursday night at the rec center. Uh, come on by. Pants brought him by. And he was there, you know, ever since. Who knows what he – well, he was good then. Really good now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. Matter of fact, yeah, that's. Uh, a... Go ahead. Yeah, no. Do we uh, we have a question from one of the viewers, though. It's about one of your former teammates, and uh, we talked about him offline before we went and on the air. It's Joey Marquez, uh-huh. uh, your teammates on uh, on Hills Brothers, and uh, I don't know if uh, fans remember this, but you guessed it on a sitcom. <laughs> Palibasa oh. Lalaki. <laughs> yeah, uh, Palibasa starring Joey Marquez. So, do you, you remember what, that? I, and what, what was that experience like? You know, I, I believe he asked me to come on and you know, on this sitcom, <laughs> and I was like, okay, he said, you're going to be the American boyfriend of. <laughs> 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 I said, well, you know, yeah. what about. Her? He said, well, yeah. you just. Yeah. 
you don't have to say anything because she, when she comes in and she has you come in, I think she might have had another boyfriend, another man there. When you come in, just rip your shirt off. <laughs> Let go. There you go, like the heart. And you know, it was fun. <laughs> I was yeah, you know, we, we were trying to look for a clip yeah. of that, you know, yeah, but we, we couldn't, couldn't find, find any. We couldn't find it. It's, we yeah, tried to get recall, in touch with, uh, with Joey. Yeah, you know what? I had that clip. But when I came it. through custom, you know how they send that? It was on Betamax, and they sent it, and you, you got to send it through the uh, the screening. It kind of oh. it kind of oh, yeah, messed yeah. it up. It's yeah, messed right. it up. Right. A lot of those tapes I had, basketball games. You know, when you went oh. through that screen and it kind of just made them all blurry or whatever, so you really couldn't see it. But I had that bad. clip. So well, if, we, sounds... if we find that, if we find the copy, yeah. we'll make sure to send it your way. Oh, okay, well, I so, remember so, that. <laughs> how long was your scene, basically? I oh, mean, a couple minutes. She just come in. I don't. I don't even think I might have said something. I put my arms around. I just ripped my shirt off. And, <laughs> 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 and then, did you do that for free, or, or did Joey? You know. No. No, they paid me. I would have oh, did it for right. free, but they said we're going to give you. I mean, they gave it to me in pay, so I got paid for it. So mm -hmm. he made sure they paid me. He became, uh, well, just to let you know, Joey became a big TV star, comedian, and then he even became the mayor of his city. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's retired now. He's uh, I think he's living a quiet life in a farm somewhere. We're trying to get in touch with him, get him on the show, because he did play oh, for the okay. Philippine team at yeah. one time. And, okay. That's yeah. right. That's so another he thing. He That's another that thing you won't uh, you you won't uh, experience in other leagues, right? You know, yeah. uh, guest starring in <laughs> no, no I'm uh, a, a sitcom, right? I'm so, surprised not, you only did one. I, I'm surprised you only did that one. I mean, you didn't get any movie offers. You didn't uh, get any offers no. to do more shows. No, no but, just just that one, just the one. All right, just now you you you're you're, you're, you're Winding down with your your career already. I mean, you're already done as a as a police officer right now. Looking back, uh, what what can you say about your Philippine experience overall? Oh man, I would love it. I recommend it to everybody to go over there, especially if you're a ball player to go over there and play. How the fans, you interact with the the fans everywhere you go. Everybody know you, and you know being out and about around town, the mall or something, you look around and. You'd have this crowd just following you. <laughs> when I first did, I was like, "Who they?" Especially once the season started, all the games is on TV, and everybody knows you. And you know, wherever you go, and people are always invite you in, real hospitable. Come on in and eat. You didn't really have to pay for dinner. And, you know, these restaurants, somebody <laughs> was right. taking you in the meal. One thing I do know: every way they go, they want you to eat. If you go to their house, it was all this big food waiting for you. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> accurate. Yeah. yeah, that is that is a Filipino. Uh, uh, with, uh, speaking of food. What is the Filipino dish that you remember the most and, and actually you like, miss the most? I like I like the pansig, the adobo. Pansig, adobo, and, yeah. Uh, the, uh, my favorite, the, look like uh, egg rolls. What, what they call that? Uh, lumpia. Lumpia, there you go. There you there go. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you still remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, that, that's pretty easy to get over there. I mean, you, you can, there's Filipino yeah, food yeah, all over can. the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Did, did Bonita learn how pork to cook anything? Or something else, though. Yeah, did and, Bonita and learn how fish. to cook? Yeah, when, when Bonita was here, did they teach her how to cook that stuff? No, she ate out all the time. <laughs> every time, every time she, she, every time I see a video, she had uh, they just had a buffet of stuff everywhere yeah. she ate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, her teammates were all very, you know, bur uh, big appetite uh, people, and they they don't get fat, so that's incredible, yeah. right? You know, she she really enjoyed it over there. I thought she might be back. You know, but she kind of went over there. She was, might have been 31, probably yeah. one of the older yeah. players when she came over. But, mm -hmm. you know, she to this day, she still has friends over there, but she has friends everywhere she played. So she had one for this pandemic right now. She probably wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. always in Brazil with her friends in South America and Chile. Yeah. It'd be great to have so, the whole so, family here, right? Yeah, it's, it's so refreshing not yeah. to get to talk to you now because we remember you as that that big guy on the court, you know, game yep. face. You were you were always right. so serious, uh, you know. And, and I'm I'm not surprised the opponents were were pretty intimidated by your presence with the size mm -hmm. and then you know we didn't see you smile as much. We've seen you smile today. <laughs> you were playing back here in the '80s, but we did appreciate your game, you know. And and, and we're so so glad that you were able to to come on the show, um, you know, and share share your story. With us, uh, Noel, Sid, anything else to add? No, on to, I, I to just want to ask uh, Francois before Sid uh, Sid asks the final question: Is 
Of all the guys you went up uh, against in the PBA, who was the toughest matchup that you ever had? Yeah. Of course, of course Norman. Norman. Okay. <laughs> Norman, and, and, you know, even, even, even Michael had. I said Norman because you know Norman, like I said, constantly moving, great shooter, can post up, stayed in shape, yeah, great leaper. You know, he was he was a tough guard. Most of the time, when when he would guard me, he kind of lay off. And my thing was, when you guard me, if you put your hands on me, I got you because I pretty much know where you are and where your weight was. He really didn't do that. You know, so it made it, you have to look over your shoulder and find him or something like that. But everybody else would be leaning on you. I said, okay, once you lean on me, I'm just going to roll off you and you're going to go by me, make it easy for me. But I would say Norman, and then I would say Hackett because you couldn't get, you couldn't breathe on him. You know, he was a fan favorite and never was fan favorite. So he even got close, the ref was blowing the whistle. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Among the locals, do you remember anybody – that stood out among the locals uh, that you went up with in your set, six years in the PBA? Um, Ramon was hard. You know, I was surprised. Ramon was hard. He was a hard guard. He was tough. He was crafty. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to face Boggs because Boggs went to the free throw a lot. He had that little pump fake, and he would <laughs> lean up under you. Yep. <laughs> he was our teammate. He was good. Abacadabra was good. You know, Abe you know, a. King was tough. Uh, you know, he just had a lot, a lot of players, you know, that was, that was good. But Ramon, for sure. You know, when you had a guard against us, he was 6'5". Yeah, Ramon was, he didn't do anything fast. It was kind of like, it was kind of like it was almost a slow motion. <laughs> but he would get to where he wanted to get to score, and he would make you foul him. So, and, yeah, you know, and, he had that little fake, right? He'd do that, yep. that fake, yeah. and then you'd be, you'd be yep. gone. <laughs> yeah, and Kadabin was tough, too. You know, so it was, you know, they had a lot of good players there. You know, a lot. And, you know, most of the time, and then when it comes to the, you know how they do it, when it comes to the, the the imports, you really didn't guard them until, until the fourth quarter. You mm -hmm. know, you would take over in the fourth quarter. You kind of let the, as they would say, let the locals beat them up. They'll get away with more than you take over in the fourth <laughs> and, try to, and try to slow them down. But, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I missed it. Missed it. But, you know, I'm, you know, great memories over there and just, you know, while you bringing up all these names that I had forgot about, of course, you, you remember all the superstars. You know, I heard somebody told me last week, it was a, it was a story. I had a, uh, uh appointment from the job left over, right? And this guy called me, and he's setting up the appointment for this doctor. He just happened to be Filipino. We talking basketball. <laughs> he said, exactly. I remember you. <laughs> he said, I had to make this call once I saw your name. I, you know, this was just last week. <laughs> and we was talking. And then he ended up telling me that, uh, and sorry to hear, it's sad to hear that, that Lemon Bang just passed away. He did. Uh, he did. Yeah, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. 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 Another yeah. great player, teammate. Yeah. yeah. yeah he yeah. was, he, oh, man, we had to, you know, I remember all of them, but it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure yeah. just reminiscing with you, and I appreciate it. Yeah. But I think that's Sid's next question about yes. Living Bang. You, it might be, might be well, part of your like, yeah. that next question. We, we ask as of all of our guests, uh, who would be your five favorite teammates of all time in the PBA? Oh, man. It had to be. Of course, you had to. Boggs. Fritz used to talk to me all the time, and, you know, when they would, he would always stand up where they would be filing a little extra hard. Fritz, I'd have to say Fritz. Of course, you know, Lemon Bang, because I was with UTEX for two years, a year and a half when I came back and took over. Right. And then, you know, Ramon Fernandez and then uh, Yo Yo. Yo Yo. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he used to say, I, I, I got this running by me. <laughs> he, he, would, he was a punisher, too. <laughs> yes, he was. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you and, called him a brute, brother. And then definitely Mike and Frankie Lim. You know, it's, it's a lot of people. You know, yeah. it's, 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 you know, it's hard, but. You know, right off the top, the ones I played with. But then, if you're talking across the league, you got our toy code, you got Francis our nice, of course, Sonny, and you know, it's just so many. You know that that I played with, Kadabin, yeah, it's, it's yeah. A yeah. King. And of course, that Toyota <laughs> team was loaded, and so was Crisper. That Crisper had uh -huh. that uh, was Philip Cesar. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Philip Cesar. Cesar. He, he took you on. <laughs> yeah, he was going to you. He was going to you. He was smart. He was he he was a smart defender, you know. So it's a lot, but I definitely have to go with the ones that I played with for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it was one that I played with when I was down there with Michelle. I don't know 
how he ended up doing in the PBA. Great leaper. And I was surprised at his uh his leaping ability. Uh Jojo Lastimosa. Yeah, he, oh, he wow. shot. Yeah. yeah. He became an all-time great. He became oh, an all-time all -time great. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. He was Man. flying all over the place. Yeah, he was rookie of the year. He won. He won a bunch yeah. of. Yeah, he was rookie of the year and won a bunch of championships with with his team, the Alaska team. Yeah, we also. Oh, so he did end up being a great team. player. He played for your team. Yeah, yeah he was brothers. That's that became Alaska. Same. That's the same squad. So he's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when, when you went up against him, uh, because he's your last teenager. playing year was eighty seven, right? So I, I think he was a uh, member of the national he wasn't, team there. He no, wasn't they, talking about JoJo, right? Yeah, yeah he was in Cebu. No, he was he was in Cebu. So I, that's how I ended up playing with him when yeah, I was playing yeah. with that oh, Michelle okay. Lee's yeah. team. He came yeah. in and the year I after. went down there. Matter of fact, Daryl Smith had took me down there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And uh, I think he just said, "Let's just go down and hang out." But I don't know how he knew them. So we ended up playing these two tournaments with him, and that's where I met him. And I was just amazed. I don't even think he was six feet, was he? Jojo. Yeah, six foot, six one? About six one, maybe. Yeah. Maybe about six, six one. Jump out the gym. I was amazed. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and just wonder because because I don't I didn't come back after that. So I was just wondering how he did in the league. I heard he was rookie of the year. He did pretty well. Didn't. He did pretty oh, well. <laughs> Played. Yeah, 15 seasons, I think. Oh, is that yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Long hey, long your long team long. a lot of championships too. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he'll, and now he's he's, uh, he's an assistant coach uh, for okay. one of the new teams, so he's yeah. still around the game. Yeah. Well, tell yeah, him I remember, him. but I said hello. If you see, okay. we will. A, lo be very a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys that you mentioned have actually been on the show, so oh, you okay. know, we, we, we've had a chance to reminisce with them. You can you can check out the the interviews with them. You know, yeah, <laughs> they're, yeah they're just here in the page yeah. anyway. Okay. Page. Yeah. Bernie Fabiosa hey. said he's he's watching right now. Yeah, Bernie hey, Fabiosa. Tell him I said hello, another teammate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so many bunch of guys, huh? Who, who, who you got to you know, yeah. nice to reminisce with you guys. Anything else, yeah. Noel? And yeah. Sid? Well, I just I, gotta I'm mention good. I just gotta mention very quickly, there's a comment here from a long time Toyota fan. Huh? And uh apparently uh your game against Toyota in eighty three, I think you were with Tandway. Mm -hmm. The third oh, conference. Uh, it was a knockout match in quarterfinals. Um, that was the final game that they would ever played in the PBA. Yeah. So you guys, yeah. you eliminated the PBA. <laughs> that was a yeah. That was a reinforced in, in, in '83. Right. So they actually showed that game uh, on local TV. Just a few TV. weeks ago. Just a few yeah. weeks oh, ago. Is that right? That's yeah, the final packet, right? No, '83. Uh, there, you, you, there were no, two the imports. Import who was a Toyota uh, import? Don, Don Andy Andy Fields. No, no, it was Andy, Andy Fields and Tony someone Ray. else. Oh, no, no, Brewster. Brewster, Brewster Andy, yeah. Was me. Brewster. Brewster. Yeah. And then, oh, okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. <laughs> so it came down to the last play, and it was Moen who took the shot, and uh, I think you blocked it, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, <laughs> you got you it. deflected it. And uh, so you guys escaped with a one point win, and that turned out to be the last game of Toyota. They the disbanded after because that. They, they folded. Out. Yeah, they folded yeah, so. right after that. And that, that's how you ended up with Mon uh, a couple of years later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In Manila yeah. beer. And it was a and pleasure play for him. It made, it made it easy. It made it easy. You know, Mon and Atoy came over and, man, they had a good team. Uh-huh. Good my team. final question right now, before we uh -huh. before before Charlie closes the show, uh, my final question to you is, uh, what, who, what do you want to be remembered most um, and, and mm -hmm. what, what legacy do you want to leave as a former PBA player who actually resided in the country for like six years and you made so many friends, so many memories? Uh, how do you want the PBA fans to remember you, those who, who you know, witnessed you play? I, you know, that I came over and played hard and hopefully they enjoy what I did and, met, you know, met a lot of friends with over there. You know, friendships, even though I didn't keep up with them, but still, you know, just bringing back these memories and and, you know, just... Just happy that I had the opportunity to come over there and play, and being remembered like you, you like you guys contacted me to this day, and I saw the one uh, about the import. Matter of fact, a lot of people started in the city ball started sending that to me. Right. right. I'm like, well, when did this come out? Matter of fact, I just barely retired. I don't know if it was your article that uh -huh. said I was retired. I'm like, well, how I just I haven't talked to anybody. How they know all that? I just it just happened last. <laughs> week. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just glad you guys remember and gave me an opportunity to say thank you to everybody over there. That's thank great. you for being with us today. That's right, right. Yeah. Thank, and you, then, thank you for thank you for coming over and sharing your basketball with us also back in the '80s, and for coming on the show 
today. You know, Francois Weiss, a pleasure to have had you on episode 23 of an eternity of basketball. For everyone watching, hey, this is Francois Weiss. If you don't, if you didn't get to watch him, you better start watching those old uh, tapes and see how this man operated. Scored 74 points in one game back in '83. For Tandwai, so four-time import here in the Philippines. Thanks so much, Francois, for joining us. And uh, well, that does it for episode 23 of an Eternity of Basketball. On behalf of my partners, Noel Zarate, Sid Ventura, we'd like to thank you, Francois. Of course, we had Eric and, and Bonita a while ago as well. Uh, in regards to them and the rest of the Wise Clan, the Basketball Wise Clan over there in LA. And uh, you know, thank you for joining us, Francois. And uh, for everyone watching, keep. Uh, Keep checking our page for our next episodes. Uh, we're going to have on Tuesday uh, we next him. week, Coach we Freddie Webb. Coach yep. Freddie Webb will be here. Of course, Francois knows him as well, played under him in, in Tandwai. So, so if you want to hear about Fast Break Freddie, you better yep. definitely tell him I said hello and I remember watching him film Cheeks to Cheeks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Cheeks he should have guessed cheeks, it yeah. there too. He should have gotten you to guess on that. <laughs> then you would have, you would have guessed it on the two funniest uh, shows back in the 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right from Palibasa Laki. Oh, yeah. So, jump on the tapos. An Eternity of Basketball, episode 23. Tapos na po tayo sa oras. Marami salamat sa iyong panonood. Dito sa AEOB. We're signing off right now here for Sid, Noel, Francois. Charlie Kuna po. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.